Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So I have a little fun tutorial today that happened to be a happy accident that I was uh, painting yesterday on my live stream on my Patreon. And I came up with this really kind of cool texture kind of style for this bird you see there on the right. And I figured, let me give a tutorial to my YouTubers. Um, it was kind of simple and easy, but look at the effect of this cool birds like in the snow kind of atmospheric mysterious a little bit abstract but really kind of cool so I figured let's do it I would be using alcohol you know liquid uh, liquid acrylic ink and watercolor of course if you have any questions please leave them in the uh, comment section let me know if you'd like to do some more textual kind of things also uh, check out my patreon at ad free videos traceables exclusive tutorials and a live stream on the top tier it's just a place people go and support my channel so you see what that happened in the live stream yesterday it created this great tutorial so we can play with this today just a lot of fun playing with texture and color and this is for any skill level let's get started all right so let me go with some supplies that i have i'll be using just a two inch you know flat wash brush here I have a new brush. This is my Princeton 12 Aqua Elite. It's got a huge belly and a super nice point. Um, playing with my paints and I go over them as I use them. Also uh, Liquitex acrylic, acrylic ink, white. A spray bottle filled with alcohol. Oh, fun stuff. But actually, I don't even know if we need that. Um, so this is really, really kind of simple um, and kind of fun. So basically you just we're not going to do anything really intense with the bird. You're just going to draw like a branch here and you can draw a couple of birds. So let me zoom in so you can draw this. I'm just using a 2H pencil. So a bird shape, kind of like a smiley face, right? If you can see that, it's kind of faint. Let me draw it a little better with the mechanical pencil. So I always tell people, you know, think in super simple shapes. You do the, the round head. Right, and then you have the belly, which is like a smile, and then you kind of curve that smile down, and then do the little wing, well, the tail. See? And then you have the little beak, and that's your bird, and then the little legs can kind of bend. Whoops. Let me grab an eraser. <laughs> okay, so I erased that. These legs look a little wonky. And I would put the branch kind of a little closer and the legs can just be like where he's like this and kind of grabbing onto it. And then the little one kind of just right here, right? And then you do a couple of them. You know, you can have a branch, a bird looking the other way, which would be kind of cute, right? And same thing, a little tail. And have the leg kind of here. See, it's a circle. You're going to be erasing this part in between. See that? Kind of a curve, straight line, a smiley face. And then going out here with the tail. And then just erase the lines that you don't like. And then, of course, the beak and the eye. But I wouldn't worry about so much what their face looks like so much, you know? And you can put other birds or you can have them sitting in different ways, different positions, all that stuff. So I'm actually gonna go and change this. I'm gonna have like more birds kind of one a little closer. See? A little closer, shorter tail. Be almost like they're kissing. <laughs> Love birds in the snow. So it was really kind of fun to play with this whole, uh, you know, happy accidents create really great things. So once you have your birds in place, all right, I'm just going to mix up some nice blues and grays, simple colors. Oop. With my big brush here. The paints gray, ultramarine blue, nice blue grays, kind of color tones. And then we have the burnt umber color here with a branch, just simple. So all I really did, I'm mixing some brown in here. I'm gonna add more blue. And just wanna put the color in real simply. I mean, I'm gonna erase 
more of these pencil marks because I don't really want to see them. I know where the bird's going to go. This is a kneaded eraser, and I love it because it doesn't have those horrible little shredded things that I don't like. So you might can't, you probably can't see the bird, but I can see the bird. So I'll go around where the eye is and just fill in the bird. Now, I would do multiple colors. You don't have to just keep it all blue. I've got this cobalt here. Because this would be wing right here. Just filling in the head. Just simple colors. You can add some deeper colors at the end. Like I said, we're not really going to worry about per painting a perfect bird because we're going to kind of destroy him and I'll explain it to you in a bit. So then I'll go in and add colors from the wing, maybe a little bit darker with some of the blues. Just playing around with that. Add some deeper valued colors, maybe in the tail, all that nonsense. And of course, it's the same thing for this bird. It can be the same colors or a little bit different, a little more blues. Maybe I'll make her a little more bluer. You know, and keep the wing there. See, what I like about this new brush is what I was looking for. I was looking for a big brush that had a great big belly, but a great point. And I had that Princeton 12 Neptune, too floppy for me. I wanted something that had a little more structure. And I was working with Princeton for um, my upcoming watercolor workshop in New York City. So they sent me this brush, and it's great. I love it. So I'm going to check out the rest of the series. That's the Black Aqua Elite series. So I'm going to remove some of the color here for her little wing. Like I said, don't worry about it being super perfect. Oh yeah, a darker tone in here. And then for the legs, it could be like blackish brown. Just simply going in here, like adding the color. And we're just going to do a simple twig and simple beak. Really, that's like you guys can totally paint this. This is the fun, happy stuff that I love when you play with your paints and see what happens. So I'm just going to put in the branch. It's going to kind of go right over the legs. Don't worry about the branch so much. Have a little twig coming off of it. They're kind of hanging out. Don't have to extend the branch. You can put some more twigs kind of hanging off if you want. It's up to you. I put that one there, kind of hanging off. Making it a little different from the first one I did. And then of course, I'm going to wait till it dries and then I'll put the beak in. And I'm going to make it like blackish brown a little bit. So I'm paints gray. And I'll leave a little bit of white. Oops, see it's bleeding still. This was not dry, so I'm going to have to wait or play around with that. I'm going to leave a little white here. The beak looks a little goofy, so I want to get it pointier. There we go. Okay, I'll do that the beak and we'll come back. I put her beak in. I might go back in here and add some more blues. So now it's still damp and it's kind of drying. I'm just going to add a few varieties of this ultramarine blue that's in there. Mix with some paints gray and same thing on his wing. I, again, I don't think it's super necessary to worry about the colors so much. Because I'm going to have fun kind of like wrecking them. <laughs> I am going to make his beak a little bit darker though. And a little more pointy. Okay. And I'm going to fix his back a little bit. So, once you get this all painted in, your birds, you know, go on the internet. There's all these vector images you can have, just a simple bird shape. It doesn't have to be like my guys looking at each other. It could be up and down. I have a little baby bird over here. Maybe put another one over here like a family. But I just did two birds to make it simple. And I'm just going to make the 
branch a little bit darker with the browns in some places. I'm going to change this up from the first one that I did. And once you get this part all done, whatever birds you want, like I said, I'm doing blue because I want this color to kind of go with my theme. So once you get that done, you finish that, let it dry completely, and we'll come back and we'll play with our <laughs> texture. Okay? I'm so sorry, I forgot that I didn't mention that this paper is um, Bohang watercolor uh, block. This is cold press. This is acid free. This is a great block. Um, a little pricey for some people. Maybe you can get like a lesion or something else, but um, it has a great rough texture to it. So this is a block. You might want to be, you really want to kind of do this in a block or, you know, if you tape down or you stretch your paper, you could use that, this exercise. So I just, I just completely forgot about that. I wanted to mention that. All right, so once they're completely dry, this is when we start using this brush, right? And I'm gonna mix up some, basically mostly Payne's Gray. Very loose over here, lots of water. And have your alcohol and your white paint close by. And I suggest using like a really kind of meh kind of brush, like I have an old crappy brush here for this um, acrylic ink. I'm shaking it up, getting it ready. So mixing up a lot of paint here. And this, do I still have some of those blues left over? And why not? They can come in handy. Ultramarine, so it's mostly gray, blue. So we're gonna take a little water on this brush. I'm gonna grab these grays, a really thick brush. And let's see if it comes out the same way, but basically this is what I did. I went over, and I'm gonna grab some more gray. And some brown with it too. And I just played with this brush, twisting and turning. I grab a little more water. See, I'm grabbing the browns too. A little gray to show you that you can make texture with brushes besides paper. And you kind of go over the birds. And as you go over the birds, it turns into this kind of layering scenario. See how I'm kind of like painting over them. It's just kind of really cool. And keep grabbing some more of this color. This gray, maybe some more blue. Like a bluish gray. You get this really kind of cool texture happening with the paintbrush. You could add some paint that's just really good right out of the tube. A little brown. See I'm just twisting this brush. Moving pretty quickly. That's another key thing to do, is move quickly, going around the whole entire paper. Just twisting. Now if you want to add more blue, I'm going to add some more blue. I'm going to grab, grab some more water. Blue. I have uh, cobalt in here, but really kind of gray. Gray. Now it's getting pretty darker, pretty darker, darker, and I'm going to remove some color. I cleaned up my brush, move some color, and I'm tapping it on a paper towel. I'm just seeing how this goes. All right. This is where you can play with the, um, they kind of disappeared, didn't they? It's a little bit darker than my first one. I'm taking some color and moving it off. My first birdies. To just kind of like softly in the distance. It's just back and forth, removing, putting the color down, and you get this texture. Now, see what happens when you spray alcohol? Does this repelling kind of granular thing? Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Is that cool? Ooh, wait, that bird got lost. Isn't that cool? Okay, I just love this. And then you take this. I know, I love having fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I'm gonna grab my little paintbrush and it's gonna snow. 
So we moved some paint. We're going to be adding some paint, splattering. Oh, it's so magical. Now it might be dry where the alcohol hit it. So it might not spread like it does when I do this. Is that cool? Uh, this one has a little splotch. I can always fix this and I'll show you how. Ooh. So, how do I fix that? Kind of like snowy birds. Aren't they cool? I mean, the little splotches here, they probably dry, they probably feed out. So if they don't like those big old splotches, I like the little delicate ones. You can kind of like lift it with the paper towel. The really big ones. So they kind of fade. Tap it around it. So it kind of blends better those bigger ones. I just love the spray. I love the layering of all this. This exercise takes minimal time. The effect is really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still kind of damp, so should play around with the alcohol a little more over here. It just creates a granular texture. And if you want to spray with water, you could have it kind of moving the paint, moving it up and side down like this. Look at that. Changes the paint again. Made it kind of like granular right here, but not right there. It's just, I don't know. I just stumbled upon this kind of technique and I'm like a kid in the candy store and I feel like there's so many possibilities. Forget about birds, you can do all kinds of things with it. And don't forget, play with texture with your paper towel too when you spray. So you can remove some paint. So it's a little lighter in some areas. Like that one, that area right there is lighter. And you can always go back in and add a little paint. Okay. Texture. I'm just kind of tapping this brush with some blue. I don't know, I just, I found this to be so much fun. Such a cool, like, happy accident. And then, of course, if you want to go in and strategically, let me have some white gouache. Um, put some snow, maybe some snowflakes. Just grab, like, a nice brush. I'll have this uh, number six I'll use. You can just take where the, some of the dots are and make little snowflakes crisscrossing them cool stars just little just a little this is where you get a little more advanced adding little details don't have to do that though or you take the actual gouache and do some more snow you know strategic snow that's what I call it in places so that one's a little too water it's nice to splatter, but it's also nice to put some actual snow in too. Just like that. Where it makes sense. And you can do little clusters. Wah, wah, wah. Isn't that cute? Still, it's still bleeding kind of over here. And look in here, beyond the birdie birds. Mystical snow. I don't know about you, but I found this to be such a fun and exciting thing to paint. And like I said, the possibilities are endless. Endless, endless, endless with this technique. I don't, I don't think I found anything more fun this year than this. <laughs> go back with my other brush. I didn't paint all the corners, so I want to make sure I get some of that. I'm just going to fill it in with 
some gray. Get a little darker too, by the way. Ooh, it can be mysterious. Let's add a little deeper gray in here. Oh, maybe not. We would want to keep it the way it was, right? See, now I've killed my happy accident by adding in some color there. I can always remove it. See, just to fill in those edges. Yeah, and then around here too. So I'm not missing up the whole thing. But I, I just, I found this thing as I was chit-chatting on my Patreon yesterday and it turned out to be the most beautiful happy accident. <laughs> so let me know if you had fun doing this too. It just It's really helpful. If you don't have the super big brush, a two inch, I'm sure you could do the same technique with one inch. And it's kind of what I do for removing paint with some flowers. But I don't know, it just would seem so much better with the colors. It's such a different kind of look. So I hope you enjoy. This is a really short tutorial too. See how fast this took? Um, this, you know, this, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you like, I, I'm dying to hear what you think about like what you did and how you came up with this. I think this would be so much fun. And you don't, you don't have to just do birds. There's so many other things you could do that's like in the snow. It could just be trees, you know, and try that. Or just branches themselves with some holly on them and the green. But the blues is where I was gravitating towards, right? So if you're going to do greens, do all greens. This is kind of monochromatic. So the green branches with green holly, I mean, maybe some touches of red, and then do the wipe away with all green. See, see what you come up with. All right, folks, have a great weekend. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.